Wander Above the Sea of Fog is a painting that's gotten a lot of notoriety. You've probably seen this painting at least once in your life. There's a lot of people that have talked about it, it's made a large impact on the art world, and it's made a large impact in my life. It's a painting that I often look at when I'm feeling down. It's a painting that sort of gives me hope and inspiration. And I decided to do a little research on it, and today I'm here to share with you what I found. So, the year is 1818. The Holy Roman Empire had recently fallen to the hands of the French, leaving Germany a not yet unified country amidst a bunch of battles and wars. But during this time, the art world was also having its own trials and tribulations. The art movement formerly known as Romanticism was currently at its peak, an art movement where artists began to abandon enlightenment values of emotional moderation and neoclassic aesthetics, leaving behind the clear, crisp lines and clarity of forms for a more emotional driven art style. A then 44-year-old German artist by the name of Caspar David Frederick would create one of Romanticism's most influential pieces. While not immediately regarded as a masterpiece, it is now currently known as one of Romanticism's most influential pieces, as well as a perfect depiction of the sublime feeling of nature and one of my personal favorite pieces. This is Wander Above the Sea of Fog by Caspar David Frederick. The painting is actually quite simple. A man stands alone atop a rocky, rock, rock, rocky. <laughs> the painting is actually quite simple. A man stands alone atop a rocky precipice, admiring a sea-like landscape of fog and jagged mountain tops. As he gazes out into the abyss, you can't help but feel a sense of adventure, as the cliff top which he stands on mimics the front of a ship gliding through an almost endless sea of fog and cliff tops. Cloaked in fog, the landscape allows your mind to wander as you think of the endless possibilities that could await you as the journey continues. The identity of the man is unknown, but a lot of people speculate that it could be Frederick himself since he shared the same red hair. As a young man, Frederick witnessed his brother drown in a frozen lake, an experience that traumatized him and is speculated to have been the inspiration for this painting itself. When I view this painting, however, I see myself in the wanderer's shoes, gazing out into my potential future. While most people might have a plan for how they want their life to go, nobody really knows what will happen and how things will turn out. When I look at this painting, I see the fog as the unknown, as unexpected events that could change the course of my life. And I see those mountaintops that peek through as the moments that we all have planned, such as getting married, buying a house, things that we sort of know are going to happen one way or another, but how we get there is a mystery. Sometimes life's unexpectedness might become overwhelming, stressful, or even draining. It is moments like this that I like to escape to nature and just admire its grandeur. There's something special about moments like this, a moment to reflect on where you are, where you've been, and where you're going. As I get older, my perspective on the painting changes. I used to view it as the beginning of the journey, the wanderer simply taking a moment to admire the journey he's about to go on to. But now that I'm a little bit older, I see it as a little checkpoint, a simple moment where the wanderer took to admire how much he's been through and how much he still has to go through. And I assume as I get older that journey might be more and more behind me, but the unexpectedness of life still remains. It is paintings like this that depict an almost private moment of contemplation that embody the Romanticism movement. It is that feeling you get when you look up at the night sky and feel almost insignificant compared to the vastness of the universe. Moments like this make your problems seem a little smaller. It is moments like this that allow me to look back at my life and see the memories I've created, the experiences I've lived through, and make me appreciate everything a little more. Day to day, your problems might seem immense, but as you take a moment to reflect and just look at everything, things don't seem that bad. It is this moment of contemplation that I see embodied in this painting. It is this moment that allows me to appreciate this painting a lot more and the reason why it's pretty much my favorite painting. The Wonder Above the Sea of Fog might not be the best painting ever created. It might not even be David Frederick's best painting. And yet, every time I look at it, I can't help but feel calm and this sense of adventure. 
The Romanticism movement has always been one of my favorites in art's history. It changed art's view of man's greatness over nature to more of an admiration for nature's grandeur and power. If you take a step back, what we do today might be insignificant to world's history. A few million years from now, no one's going to remember whether we worked out today or whether we didn't. But the fact that we are experiencing those moments is what makes those moments beautiful. The joy I find in this painting isn't about the goals. It isn't about those cliff tops. It's about those moments that you're in the fog and you're unsure of what's going to happen. I might be looking too much into this painting, but that's how it makes me feel. And at the end of the day, that's what romanticism is all about. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, go ahead and drop a like and hit that subscribe button. If you have any more ideas on paintings, books, movies you want me to talk about, feel free to drop them down in the comment section. I have a few planned, but I'd love to see what you guys think.